All right, welcome to another episode of Text In Life. This is Rick. And I'm Shane. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all you moms and others who are filling that position. That's actually what uh, delayed me today because I was in uh, Linko, which is uh, almost an hour away from Taipei, almost, and uh, saying hi to Irene and her family and that. So uh, sorry about the delay, guys, but uh, we're, we're, we're here for the, the show now, so that's what matters. <laughs> all right, what we got here? See, that's us. Follow us on Twitter. You know, so you can get some updates and, and stuff. <clears throat> All right, so first news. First news, here we go. Uh, let's check this out. Ta da! Guess what's coming out this week? Yeah. Deadpool 2. <laughs> we actually get it in Asia a little bit before yeah. other regions. Uh, not only Asia, but there, there's a few other territories that get it earlier. And it's releasing here on the 15th. So uh, we'll be sure to visit the theaters. Yeah, and, uh, apparently it's already dropped in the UK, from what I've heard. Oh. Or at least at least they did like a, a big premiere um, over over the weekend. So. Yeah, they they had the premiere. Yeah, but yeah, I think they do also get it on the fifteenth as well. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing Josh Brolin in this. I know, I know. He's just um, he's actually really excited about this project too. I think this is something. It's a little bit more new for him, you know, considering if you, like, you know, look back through his, his credit history. Goonies. The various films that he's done. Well, Goonies, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Goonies is probably about the closest that he's, he's done to something like this where it mixes, like, you know, like the, the action and the humor. and. Uh, but, yeah, like, he's he's been really excited about it since the time of filming. Yeah. I'm going to adjust this camera just a little bit. It's sliding over to the side. I might have to adjust that again later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so <laughs> he, he's, he's pretty excited about it. Um, I'm really, really excited about it. Um, now that they've gotten the whole, like, origin story out of the way, you know, they're just, they're they're kind of free to advance the stories and try some, try some new things. And this is, well, they're, they're, they're suggesting that this is going to be a lot funnier and a lot more action-packed than the first one, so. I saw a small article that said uh, Ryan Reynolds may not do a Deadpool 3. Because unless he they can come up with a really good story for him, because he's he wants it to develop from Deadpool two going into um, X Force. Yes, uh, and X Force is the next one that's scheduled for the release. But whether or not they do a Deadpool three just kind of depends on whether or not they can get like a really good standalone story. But probably what's going to end up happening is we're going to focus on X Force. Yeah, yeah. Um, really and then of course there's like a whole bunch of speculation um, with. Uh, um, Dis Disney acquiring the rights to the to the Fox properties um, as to whether or not they're going to continue. Now, so far, the word from Kevin Feige is that uh, they have no intentions of um, making any changes to the Deadpool franchise and, you know, allowing them to continue as they go. Right. Uh, but whether or not they try to actually incorporate that into the MCU is yet to be seen. Yeah, I know that they, they said that they're not going to do anything with this current uh, plan for the movies Infinity War and stuff. They, they yeah. have no plans for the crossover, but they didn't rule it out in the future. So there you go. All right, next up we got... Uh, we got... This is from uh, EW.com. Uh, Thanos is coming to Fortnite for Epic Avengers Infinity War crossover. Uh, and uh, Fortnite is a game that's released on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, iOS, Microsoft Windows, and Macs as well. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, you'll be able to uh, fight fight Thanos and or perhaps use him as a character. I, I um, actually, yeah, I, I, um, I watched that uh, video that's yeah. attached to this site. Uh, what site is that? That's it's uh, EW.com. EW.com, okay. So yeah, um, there, there's, there's a video that they, they put up um, in this article. And effectively what it is, is the Infinity Gauntlet is in play. So whoever finds it gets transformed into Thanos and gets all of the oh, respective powers that nice. go along with it. So That's awesome. that looks really exciting. That's cool. Um, I wouldn't mind checking that out at some point if, if we can manage. But, you know, yeah. uh, we do actually have quite the playlist set up <laughs> so far. So that remains to be seen. Yeah. Um, that's a good thing and bad thing about trying to run a YouTube channel is that not only do you produce content, but you're trying to pre-plan your next content. Yeah, and, and, uh, and with with stuff coming up so quickly, it's just it's it's really difficult to 
yeah you know make the time so and plus we're trying to do our movie reviews for the summer too any uh you know especially superhero we're like we're big superhero fans so any superhero movies that come yeah. out we definitely want to try and you know attend those and you know that takes time then we'll do a quick uh, review video and that that takes a little bit of time and, yeah. yeah and i mean we, we got deadpool coming up uh what's uh ant-man and the wasp yeah that's not gonna too, come up soon. not too far from now that's true all right all right let's see what we got here uh, Intel rolls out the first launch-ready Day Zero graphics driver. So basically what's happening here is that um, Intel is going to be entering into the GPU market. And uh, beforehand, they, they have a RTM, which is a term used to describe the version of software first released to hardware manufacturers for bundling. Basically, they, they get the software and the hardware ready and they put it together. Now, usually in the past, Intel has posted new graphics drivers uh, one to two months after the um, the RTM, uh, basically the, the hardware is being produced, but now they're they're doing it at the same time. Yeah. So they're getting their their software and hardware all lined up so that they can actually push out decent graphics cards yeah. and uh, and drivers. So well, I thought you were gonna say they're getting they're, they're getting their stuff together. <laughs> <laughs> push out their stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I gotta take control of that there. There we go. All right, next one we got up. Oh, there we go. Next one we got up is the GeForce Experience. Yes, uh, the new drivers are out. The three nine seven point six four drivers are out. They're optimized for games, and we got uh, Destiny's two latest DLC, Warmind, is optimized for that, as well as Pillars of Eternity two, um, Dead Fire, and also Conan Exiles. And there's some bug fixes for some graphics cards. Uh, Windows 10 fixes to HDR. God knows Windows 10 needs that. <laughs> Far Cry 5, Wolfenstein 2, and more. So there we go. Okay. Um, moving right along. I'm excited about this next game. Yeah. Battlezone Gold Edition is now available. Um, so this Gold Edition is supposed to include all of the uh, DLC up till now. Yeah. Um, all, all in one package and for you know all of those people who previously um, have battle zone uh, it's just like a, it's a quick and simple upgrade yeah that, that'd be nice too uh, they'll automatically upgrade to the gold edition and uh, it gives you the game oh that's right and the big thing about gold edition is that you can use the game uh, normally or with a VR headset which is awesome I missed that. Yeah, <laughs> right at the very bottom. Yeah, but, I, I, yeah. I, I didn't even see that. That's, that's pretty cool. As someone who like you know, I actually played on. You remember the old, old Atari Battlezone yeah. arcade machine? You had to stand up and like grab the things and stick your face in it. Like that, yeah. that was awesome. And to have that, and that, that was already like the closest thing to VR that you got. Yeah. In that decade. You know? uh, yeah. Because you're I, like, boom. I totally you know, remember that. The, the graphics on that thing were were like absolutely terrible at the time. But, you, you know, but it was, it was awesome, just so but... much fun because it was just completely immersive. <laughs> if you look back at it now and the graphics we have today, you're like, oh, th those graphics were were crap. Yeah, you know, they were, just... they, you know <laughs> absolutely. But at the time, yeah, it was just very exciting. It was. Yeah, ve was vector cool. graphics for those people who know what I'm talking about. Vector <laughs> graphics. Remember that? And that and uh, Tempest and a few other yeah. vector graphics. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Hey, your age is showing. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 got a, I, I saw an old machine lying around somewhere. You know, that's what I Yeah, yeah. Doing. Yeah. It's like, oh. <laughs> what is this? One of those phonographs that my grandpa was always talking about? They, they always put those in, in, in TV shows and stuff. Yeah. And movies is like, you know, it's like, oh, here's a... what? what did, you know, they, they had more record players than phonographs, right? So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, moving right along, we got uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War. This is from WCCFTech.com. And uh, basically, this game has started out with great, great pre-reviews. But when the game actually came out, kind of like people were not happy because they changed too many things from the original game, which was excellent. The original game was great. Yeah. But the good thing is that this developer... Uh, who? <laughs> this developer has uh, continued to support the game, which is awesome. And um, they're doing one last story expansion, the Desolation of Mordor, and the big free update, which adds new difficulty level uh, nemes nemesis enhancements to fix that. They kind of broke the system, which was yeah. the, the best part of the original game. I remember defeating this, you know, getting killed by one orc, and then he's like, oh, I have power! And then from that point on, he was my nemesis. So every time I was like, I saw that guy, I was like, oh, I'm going to try and, 
I'm going to try and, you know, take care of him this time. And then he'd get, you know, like my first couple of playthroughs, I, I kind of sucked. So he would get stronger and stronger every time he beat me. And then he's like this level 20 guy. He's like, I'm going to kick your butt. He's like, oh, no. <laughs> and he had like all his minions around too. So yeah. you couldn't just like. So you're just spending your whole time like running away from the map trying to kill the minions one at a time. And like, meanwhile, he's just getting stronger and chasing you around going like, it's like, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do this mission completely unrelated to that area. And he'd show up. He's like, hey, how's it going? I'm going to kick your ass. And I'm like, no. <laughs> trying to run away and stuff. <clears throat> the good thing about this update is that they actually, they, they promised it last month and they got rid of the microtransactions for the game. I don't mind some, some microtransactions. Yeah, okay. Of course, obviously when you buy a game, you buy the game and you shouldn't have to spend any more money on it. Yeah. But I can understand if you want to buy some, you know, obviously the, the development studios, they want to provide more DLC. They want to provide more outfits and other okay. things, right? So in order to fund that, of course, they're going to give up, you know, free, like next to free stuff or okay. very low cost stuff. Just like, hey, if you want to get this cool outfit or stuff. Yeah. That that's cool. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. As long as it's not a pay to win, where you buy a big gun. And yeah. Then, you know. Well, I mean, and and that's becoming more and more of a common trend. Um, do we have a video for this one? We do. We do. Okay. <laughs> I, I am sorry. Well, I, I just I, I I watched the video. I just wasn't sure if we we grabbed it, but it looks fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, this. Yeah, based on the original game, this this uh, this. Uh, what am I saying here? The, this uh, uh, whole setting, you know, with Lord of the Rings, and they've they've gone gone on and done all this. It's just is really amazing. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you know, we can't show it full screen, you know, for for various legal reasons. But yeah. doing commentary on something while we're talking about it is totally fine, <laughs> as per the law. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this this looks really awesome, and uh, this is the actual promo for the Desolation of Mordor. The the law, awesome. which is YouTube. Yeah, well, American law, but yeah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that, that looks pretty awesome. Go check out that game. The, the story's on wccftech.com. Don't forget that all the links for all the stories we're, we're talking about today are in the description, along with uh, some Play Asia links. We do have some affiliate links, so please do support our channel by buying some stuff through us. That would be awesome. And thanks in advance for that. All right. What do we got next? Fortnite update. Ooh. That looks really awesome. Yeah, 4.0 is now available. Full release notes revealed. Um, no, I'm, trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Um, it says they have a meteor shower of content. And this one is, uh, if I can get the right key, that is the wrong key. Wait. <laughs> uh, yep. There we go. That's the right key. Oh, yeah, right. We're still learning our keys here. Anyway, um... It says that the, the story behind this is for Fortnite, a big comet has finally crashed and many locations have been transformed by its impact. As such, players will discover all new points of interest or find their favorite landing spot changed. Basically, the developers said, okay, we, we released a decent game and people are enjoying it, but we want to tweak it a little bit, change a little bit of it, make it more interesting. And uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, just a quick note here is uh, information on this one comes from uh, dsogaming.com. Thank you. I did forget that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the patch that they're implementing is, improves the smoothness of other players' movement on the starting island by increasing network update rates. Um, there's some sig significant performance uh, in improvements when many players are on screen by reducing the impact of character parts to all the things that you have you know, displayed on. Um, optimizes the level of details for buildings in shifty shafts and flush factory and hitches that occur when garbage collecting objects. So if you if there's tons of objects outside the range or whatever, then um, the computer usually gets those out of memory to provide for uh, faster faster play experience. That's not too bad. Oh, too far. There we go. Do sex. Do sex. This one's from uh, tweettown.com. <clears throat> okay, Dusex says, it isn't dead. <laughs> I'm not dead. <laughs> uh, now, I mean, of course, that still remains to be seen, but, you know, basically the um, the studio is, is basically trying to breathe new life into this franchise, and um, it says it needs time to plot out the IP's future. Uh, the studio gives the franchise our blood, 
uh, sweat and everything to reboot the franchise uh, and be true to it. Now, again, we'll have to kind of you know, wait and see what it is that they come up with. I didn't see like a whole lot of details on exactly what they were kind of trying to do in order to yep. <laughs> oh dear. bring it back. But uh, I don't know. It might be worth checking out. Um, again, this is this is uh, from Tweak Town. Uh, I've 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 worked it. <laughs> I have worked it. It's it's kind of working, and kind of not working. Hey, there we go. Yeah, hey, oh, <sighs> geez, yeah, that's still a little. Is that okay now? I think that's okay now. Oh, this is the uh, first show we're doing with uh, multiple multiple video. Um, so, uh, bear with us here as I, I figure out what's going on. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> Technical issues, but, uh, there we go. Okay, good. Yeah, so. More off the Tweak Town page. Yeah, basically, um, but when I was, I was not focused there. Um, yeah, Deuce X, uh, EDOS Montreal, um, really wants to, you know, they, they're, they're, proud and they 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 put all their blood sweat and everything into it and uh they want to do uh, another installation they just want to do it correctly yeah so that's good yeah. well and like i said you know like keep an eye out for it you know check it out because i mean it wouldn't be the first time that you know someone's tried to breathe new life into a franchise but yeah. whether or not they manage to do it successfully remains to be seen but with the way that they're they're stating it i would say it's give it a look yeah you know yeah um because there's well i mean nothing has been announced for the for the future yet there's well yeah like like still... you know we don't know what they're doing just the fact that they're planning on doing yeah. it that's true as you can already see up on the screen we have yeah so nzxt unveil uh, unveils the limited edition h700 PUBG case and uh looks really awesome this one's courtesy uh from the uh tweaktown.com site and uh, yeah, that that shot looks really, really nice, really amazing. I'm quite happy with that shot. Yeah, it's um, it, it's a nice looking case. It is. It is. All right, next one. Okay, <laughs> so Paladins leaves Steam early access and fully releases on May eighth. <clears throat> uh, I did actually watch the video for this. Um, again, it, it it looks it looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, I do have a video. <laughs> if I can do it without it. <laughs> yeah, as I said, it's a new thing here for us. There we go. Hey, there we go. So we got some paladins running on here. This looks really nice. It looks like a great game. Uh, very, uh, not a realistic style, but more like an Overwatch animated style. But uh, yeah, I'm impressed by it. The uh, rendering quality looks really nice, and uh, hopefully the play. It plays yeah. really good, but um, well, I mean, I, I often have that opinion when I um, see, you know, uh, trailers for for video games. Is like, if that is representative of the actual gameplay, then I'll be so happy. I'll be so impressed. Yeah, it's like, uh, don't but don't unfortunately, a lot of times it's 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 a series of of cutscenes and yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, this is uh, made by High Res Studios. And it's a free-to-play hero shooter. So there we go. And it uh, has over 25 million players right now, yeah. which is that, that's quite a lot. That's yeah, and lot. again, that comes from uh, DSOgaming.com. Oops, I'm going to jump to there. That's the next one that you need. Oh, there we go. There we go. Ta-da! All right, yay. Ah, AMD Z490 and Intel Z390 are happening. They are happening. Do we actually have an expected timeline? Uh, June 2018? Yeah, they said the 490s, uh, Z490 chipsets, is basically uh, an X470. And this is for AMD. <laughs> yeah. With more PCIe lanes. And uh, Blue Chip, which is a um, uh, uh, German... Um, what is it? A tech. Yeah. Here, let me just 
sorry, it's a German IT distributor. So they're they're the people who distribute all the all the all the uh, chips and everything oh, okay. else. So yeah, and uh, basically yeah. So they said that's going to be coming up, and also the this this actually the Z490 releases sooner than the Intel B450, which is a mid-range chipset for Pinnacle Ridge. Uh, roadmap seem to confirm that an eight-core Intel uh, will be coming out for um, Coffee Lake CPUs, and that will be supported by the Z390 chipset. And it also looks like later on in the year, the Threadripper will receive a platform refresh uh, rather than a new chipset. Um, and they're expecting the second gen around August of 2018. Okay, that news was brought to us by videocards.com. Yeah, that's right. And also from videocards.com. Um, I'm just going to do this right on your screen here because I'm yeah, still having problems I, with the video. I get there that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right. And the Z390 is to support existing Coffee Lake S CPUs. So maybe if you already have a Coffee Lake S and uh, you, still, you see one of the brand new motherboards and it, uh, you know, it's like, well, I got to get that motherboard, then you should hopefully be able to take your Intel CPU that you've already, you know, dropped 300 to $400 on and put it in the new motherboard. So that, that may be an option for you. <laughs> okay, uh, back in gaming news, again from dsogaming.com, we have BattleRite has 4 million unique players and will get a Battle Royale mode this summer. Yeah, that looks really awesome. Hey, oh, yeah, okay, that, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah ba Battle Riot is a free-to-play team-based action game based on multiplayer online battle arena gameplay. And it's developed by Stunlock Studios. So that, that seems pretty awesome. Uh, you should probably go check that out on Steam. That's from uh, DSO Gaming. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, yeah. So uh, the cool thing I wanted to have a look at, I'm not sure how much of this we're going to see, but... Are we jumping ahead on that one? Uh, we, we mixed up the order. It's all good. Okay. That's all right. Yeah. Or F6. There we go. Um, there's a video out right now on YouTube. There's six minutes of the beautiful gameplay footage from the latest version of Star Citizen. Now, saying beautiful, the detail in this is is amazing. Yeah, we we uh, you know the uh, small screen grab that we have up there doesn't really do it justice. You should go to the YouTube channel, check it out, give it a like too, because uh, the the amount of effort that they put into that. Look look at that ship. That's just that's really awesome you get to fly that you can like land it you can walk right out of it onto the terrain yeah you can go from and they, they demoed this a while back they actually had two like ship to ship and then you can actually you know depart the, the loading bay of one and yes. fly across the other ship and get into the other ship and it's all seamless there's no like yeah. cut scenes or loading scenes or anything it's, it's yeah. seamless which is yeah you know, and then like um the the visual details are are absolutely stunning um in this clip here uh, after you land, like you can see the texture in the rocks when he's like walking over to the shed in order to pick up the box. It's just, oh, well, I mean, yeah, check out that that you know dash view. That's awesome. You know, it'd be really cool is if they do even part of this in VR. You know, it, the only it thing does that's, look like it's kind of in VR from the way yeah, it's you know, but maybe the, the only thing that's missing is the coffee ring from the mug. You know, like <laughs> yeah, because no you know, you know, any any you know any spacecraft pilot would have some kind of drink holder or <laughs> you know true. so some parts of the interior of the ship kind of remind me of the uh, firefly yeah well yeah actually i was i was even thinking that like the the general shape of of the ship like it doesn't have like the cylindrical yeah back end but even still like you know some of the layout of the ship the ship design kind of definitely looks like it was in you know inspired by the firefly class that's really awesome all right, next one we got up. I'm going to throw this over to your screen here. Next one we got up is, uh, so yeah, you know, I, I'm dying to check out that game. Um, GTA V has a Battle Royale, and we already know this already. The Battle Royale actually came out in November of last year, I believe. But now there's a mod that comes that, that's just come out that turns the game into a single-player Fortnite, like PUBG uh, type of game. So that, that's really awesome. Yeah. And that's, uh, this is uh, from, oh, it's uh, another YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, I think, oh yeah, that, no, there, there's, a, there's a thing and also YouTube as well. Yeah. So yeah, basically, yeah. Um, GameSpot. This, this article, we found it on GameSpot. And uh, if I go to the next one, that, that, that's not the right one. <laughs> that's, 
That's that's also not the right one. <laughs> what? I may not have the video for this. There, there's a YouTube link anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, maybe I didn't. I, oh, I forgot to grab it. Okay. Oh, okay, that's okay. Yeah. Um, I did check it out. I, I recommend doing the same. Um, so just, uh, I guess, I guess look that up on YouTube or I think there's a link right off the site, isn't there? Yeah. The, 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 if you go to, uh, this gamespot.com, gamespot gamespot you'll actually see the, and, the link and look, to the look up GTA battle, uh, GTA five battle rail. Yeah. Well, or, or follow the link in the, in the description below, but basically, yeah. uh, complex control has 70 unique ca characters with color matched weapons and vehicles. And, um, it, it, you gotta control and survive a deadly zone populated with AI parachuting from the sky or driving right towards you. And there's uh, 50 unique abilities with cooldowns. Um, players can choose pre-made characters uh, with their own weapons abilities and then you progress your own character until they die or until you trade them. And for all of you that are really familiar with the, the GTA uh, franchise, um, this tends to keep up the intensity of like, you know, your most notorious moments. Yeah. So there's not really a whole lot of room to rest in between that because there are always other people gunning for you. Yeah. And so if, you can't if, just yeah. like, you know, hide it out until your notoriety goes down. Like yeah. you basically, it's, it's you against them all the time. That's, that's pretty much what I picked up from it anyway. Yeah. But that, to think about it, because I mean, uh, PUBG is basically open field, like woods yeah. and that kind of stuff. To have that same thing in a in a city experience, that would yeah. be something unique for sure. Yeah, and and um, again, like full range of like area vehicles, um, you know, uh, land based vehicles, and it's 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 all in there. So, That's you know, awesome. again, there's 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 not really any sort of hiding it out, waiting for your notoriety to go down. There's no calm points to this game that I've seen. It's just, it's non-stop action. That's awesome. And that brings us to another game. This one's for uh, Conan Exiles. And they have sold 1 million copies. And it leaves early access today. And uh, so far, I have a... <laughs> there we go. Hey, there we go. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, this looks really awesome. I, I'm... You know, I used to read the books when I was a kid growing up. You know, my, my mom wouldn't allow me, but, you know, I, I went to the library. Yeah. So that, that was pretty awesome. But, uh, yeah, the um, this game looks looks really nice. So I'm uh, I'm eager to try it out when I, when I get a, a free night. That will be awesome. And it's got some character creation. The uh, environments look really varied and cool. Well, and, I mean, the other thing is, you know, like, they, they focus on the fact that they really expanded the world in this one. So, like, when they first started, it was just basically, it was like playing in a sandbox with some buildings, and those buildings eventually developed and developed. But they've actually released, like, you know, um, sort of a northern winter-type territory, and, you know, um, well, I mean, if you look at this lush greenery and full-on civilization, you can travel all around the world in this. Uh, there's one actual uh, part where if you build yourself a map room, then you actually get to jump from place to place. Oh, that's nice. And the yeah. one thing I like about this one that, you know, maybe uh, Skyrim or another great game was lacking is the fact that uh, they have a desert, like a big desert, yeah. like a Sahara kind of... Oh, well, that, and, and awesome. like I said, that desert is, is pretty much where they started and then they built everything around it. So it's very, very central. So, yeah, like I said, you know, you have like forests and you have you know um you know like cities and towns and you know like 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 a, a tundra like area so um you know plus you know like like the uh, weather simulation in this is supposed to be like really really decent. really good yeah. also random <laughs> so it just kind of keeps the gameplay interesting that's awesome um oh we got uh, some comment in the channel we have uh, victor and he's asking about a possible tutorial for G Skill DDR4. Um, yeah, um, G Skill's not not too bad. Uh, I will see what I can do about that. Um, I'm actually building a new rig, so when I can, I will I will see if I can get that. The only problem with, especially with the XMP, the, like the overclocked RAM, is that sometimes it's not stable. I actually had issues with that because I had a uh, I have a MSI 270 uh, titanium. Uh, X Power Gaming, and uh, I've had 
problems with that thing for like a year. Um, just, uh, I'm not too sure what causes it, but I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's the memory overclocking because yeah. if it's off, then I have less problems. So yeah, um, I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do. No promises at this point because, uh, I've already ordered some RAM for the computer, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> uh, PlayStation. Let's move on to the PlayStation news. Well, okay. <laughs> uh, this is from... EGMnow.com uh, Interview with Spider-Man's creative director has revealed even more details on the upcoming game, including interesting perk that unlocks after completion. Um, now, basically what they're talking about here is once you complete the game, you unlock uh, God Mode, which gives you a whole bunch of control and ability over the game. Um... I briefly scanned this, to be honest, so I don't have yeah. a lot of details on this. Um, there was an interview with Insomniac Games creative director. Oh, by the way, this article we found on uh, egmnow.com. Yeah. And uh, the creative director, Brian Ith, sorry, In Intahar, <laughs> reveals that players will have the freedom to manually change the time of day and weather after completing the game's story campaign. The reason for that is they wanted to provide the feeling and for their narrative for the game. Yeah. Um, other game details discussed uh, were that the Iron Spider suit, we, we talked about this the yeah. other episode, and they, if you pre-order it, you'll get this suit. But, actually, um, it won't be behind a permanently locked uh, pre-order wall. So, you, so eventually they will make it available to... Yeah, but basically if you pre-order the game, you can get it much sooner yeah. in the game than, yeah. you know, you maybe have to complete the game most of the way or all the way before you can unlock it. Which, if suit. you're a big Spider-Man fan, you know, is definitely worth it. The Iron Spider suit is really cool. Speaking of which, I should pre-order that. <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that it, it won't be permanently locked. However, they did reveal that there's no, uh, the iconic him hanging off the, uh, yeah, him hanging off the Statue of Liberty, that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen, unfortunately. Yeah, that's, that's actually not available in gameplay. Yeah. But there are other things that will be coming up, so yeah. there we go. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can... I'm going to use yours for, for now, because uh, mine, is, mine is kind of um, not, not working properly. Okay. All right. So what do we got? Uh... <laughs> From PlayStation.com, PS2 games join the PS Now library of 600 plus titles. We got uh, Ape Escape 2, Dark Cloud, Hot Shots Tennis, and notably Metal Slug 3. So that's pretty oh, good. nice. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Uh, this is off of the uh, PlayStation US blog. So there we go. A couple of uh, titles thrown up there and some of the most popular games on the service right now. So there we go. All right, I'm gonna continue to use yours here because yeah, that's fine. <laughs> until I until I work this out here. Um, Sony, uh, this article is off of TweakTown.com, and Sony actually says that they may be using blockchain for games digital DRM, the digital rights management. So they're they're not sure how they're gonna implement it or whatever, but it's just basically it's a patent filing yeah. for the use of uh, blockchain because it's so versatile. And they're going to try, try to use it to safeguard their own games and uh, potentially those sold from the online network. Yeah, so, you know, um, I think basically it's to control things like um, content that comes from the, uh, like, say, the cards that you get when you first buy a console or, you know, anything along those lines where, you know, you scratch the card and then you realize it's like, oh my goodness, this has already been used. Like, I just... I remember we actually went through that with the, the PS4 and there's like like three different cards in there. Uh, we yeah. tried to redeem these cards and they were all... Yeah, well, that's 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 a difficult thing because um, because we live in Asia and uh, a lot of these tie-in promos are region-specific, which I did not well, know. Part, 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 of, part of that is true, but yeah. the other thing, and I do know this from like, you know, um, people with, with products in North America before I moved here, is that they also had that same thing where like yeah. you know you get three promo cards and that promo code that's underneath the the scratch off surface had already been redeemed even though they just scratched it off oh by the yeah yeah that, that's true that's true um yeah. and so you know one of the the nice things about using blockchain for their um for their management uh is that 
I think they're hoping to reduce uh, that particular problem along with, you know, uh, people buying something online, getting their redeem code off of the Sony website and then... Well, I, I think I think the the primary goal for this one is probably the copyright infringement because, yeah. you know, especially if you can, you know, copy discs or rip discs, then you won't need to buy the game. However, I mean, I, I'm a big champion for, you, you know, way back in the day when we had like Super Nintendos or whatever else... Um, you were able to trade the games with your friends, and what, what if you don't want the game anymore? Or for what, you know, what if it had lost its appeal? You could still sell it, or I mean, you've bought it; it's yours. You should be able to do something with it, including trade it for some kind of value. So I, I understand. You know, companies always want to F seven. Yeah, companies always want to you know get, get as much money from the customers as possible because you know they they work hard for their product. I get that, but at yeah. the same time, if you, if I purchase, you know. A phone and I don't want the phone anymore I can, I can still sell this phone and yeah. get value for it if I buy you know a water yeah. bottle I can still sell the water bottle you know for for pennies but the the I, the concept is still there well I mean there's there's entire markets out there like you know GameStop and EB and um, you know they make most of their money on reissuing games that people have already played you know the pre-owned game market is is absolutely huge yeah yeah it really is uh i don't know if i'm gonna be able to do this that's uh, yours yeah oh, i can throw that up there oh hey, hey i got it there we go <laughs> i just learned how to do that there we go <laughs> all right you want to do the next one there we go okay I'll god of war sells over 3.1 million units in three days 3.1 million units yeah three days yeah. That's crazy. And it's crazy, too, because um, I was watching on um, PlayStation Access. It's another yeah. great YouTube channel. If you're a PlayStation fan, you should totally check that out. Um, there, It's all about God of War right yeah. now. All Like, all the people who are playing it. Well, I remember um, seeing the, the, the teasers for this, and it just... It was so cinematic. <clears throat> like, it was just phenomenal. I actually played the original God of War for PS... Two, two. I think it was two. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that was that was a really awesome experience. I didn't. Yeah. I, it was my buddy's copy, and I just played like an hour of uh, of it. But it was yeah. really, really amazing. And uh, I'd be meaning to jump on this wagon and, and try some because it, it's really fun. It's a yeah. great game. But uh, whew, I tell you, um, yeah. The not only this game, but the God of War three, the previous title. I think this is the the new one. Is he's with his son yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, even the the previous version has been selling like like hotcakes right yeah. now. Well, though you know, it's I, I think from from its very inception, it was o always a very popular franchise because yeah, um, I uh, up until before moving here had uh, uh, PSP God of War edition. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, which is really nice too because that unit comes in this like you know really like deep blood red you know just the same as the makeup and that, that's yeah. going to lead into our next point actually but uh i just want to say that um uh, what was it uh the it sold more than yeah 3.1 mi mi uh, million units globally in the first three days that was april 20th to 22nd so they just got in the stats that leads into our next point which is this one right here which looks amazing this is from um playasia.com site uh again the affiliate link down below if you want to buy it Whew, that price tag, man, though. <laughs> this is a this is a Japanese a region model. However, um, just with my... The same as with in Taiwan. I purchased my PS4 Pro in Taiwan thanks to... Well, <laughs> actually, it was a birthday gift. <laughs> thanks to Irene. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a it's an Asian region, region model. However, I was able to get onto the U.S. PlayStation Store. Yeah. It depends on what, what account you have set up for your PlayStation. Yeah. So if you have a US account, you can use that to log in, you can choose English and, and do all that. But it's just beautiful, like the the silver and, and gold and the etchings and stuff on the surface, that, that's really nice. If I didn't already have a PS4 Pro then. But plus uh, the one terabyte hard drive that comes with it. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, two bonuses of getting the, the Pro version is you get a, generally you get the one terabyte version uh, for hard drives and also um, you have the, um, smoother gameplay the upgraded processor so no no is that just the one controller with that or does it come with the just the one just, just the one, one. That, okay. that's kind of standard with the special edition yeah. uh releases that we've seen really really nice oh. sorry what are 
There we go. That's there what I meant to do. <laughs> ah, this one. Uh, wild player become, uh, sentenced to one year in federal prison before uh, for crashing Blizzard servers. Uh, now this is about a uh, World of Warcraft player from Romania who uh, used to get really, really mad at his guild um, for either uh, A, not inviting him out on a quest or, you know, B, um, you know, not sharing the raid spoils to his satisfaction. Uh, and so he'd do a DDoS attack on the Blizzard servers in order to punish them. Yeah, so basically, if, I, if, I, if you're not going to involve me, I'm going to, you know, mess up everyone else's game. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, Kalen Mateus, and uh, he conducted a series of these attacks between February and September of 2010. That's um, like now, uh, yeah, what happened <laughs> is in 2011, uh, he was actually extradited to the U.S. That's uh, crazy. And put for... on federal trial. Um, That's crazy for hacking a com your server. Well, like, you wow. know, and I mean, you think about it, it's like, oh, it's just a game server, and he didn't do any permanent damage. But the one of the you know problems is, is this is a federally pr protected server, you know, because it is it is a business, and you know, even though there's no permanent damage done, you know, uh, there were losses that were you know incurred from like um, the fact that. You know, business could not be performed while this attack was underway, and so there were like you know, um, you know, p potential profit losses and, and and whatever. Oh yeah, for sure. Because wow, it's yeah, a huge industry, huge, yeah. huge, especially yeah. especially back then. Yeah, like so was... ba basically, yeah. So over over this time, uh, basically the U.S. court, uh, he was extradited and pled guilty to one count of intentional damage to a protected computer. Uh, by the way, this article is from techspot.com. Um, oh, thanks. And, <laughs> it's all good. And uh, he was sentenced to a year in prison, and he had to pay 29000 uh, almost 30000 in restitution to Blizzard, which he has already paid. So, uh, really crazy. Wow. Really crazy. Next up, we have something really cool. I'm looking forward to this. To all you Zelda fans out there. Yeah, yeah. This is Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. And it's a preload live on Switch. Uh, basically, it's you can download it. You, you have to pay for it, obviously. But you can you can download it now on Switch. Um, I know nothing about this game. I This is the first I've actually heard of this game. It looks pretty interesting. Um, there's, uh, you know, Nintendo. We can't show trailers. We just say for not to. But um, this article's off of Destructoid. And it uh, looks like there is a Wii, Wii U original uh, game. It takes the features from that and also the 3DS features and puts them all together and releases them for the Switch. So if you haven't ever checked out this game, this might be uh, one to check out. And uh, yeah, maybe go check out the trailer online. That sounds good. <laughs> um, more Nintendo news. This is from egmnow.com. And they're basically saying that um, Nintendo's main goal is to keep Switch owners engaged, but not to try to outdo Wii sales. Yeah. <coughs> usually, with the, usually with the releases of consoles, you know, the, the companies always try and push, you know, sell more consoles, sell more consoles. And that's, you know, it's great for building a fan base to engage in games. But I, I like Nintendo's idea here is that they want to keep the people who have already purchased their systems... You know, keep using their systems. <coughs> so I'm. Well, I'm, yeah, and I mean, the the I guess the abilities of, of both of the, the those two consoles are so different from one another. Um, in in what you can do with them, you know, like the Wii is a really nice sort of family at home kind of entertainment package, yeah. you know, whereas the Switch is kind of the you know sets a. a community with your friends who may also have a, a switch so you can yeah. you know go yeah. to your buddy's place and bring your console with you and you can game and go yeah yeah but you, you kind of i can understand the way they're saying it it's like oh yeah we want to focus on this but at the same point i need to mention the the, the stats and maybe you'll understand why they came out with this angle maybe it's a marketing technique i'm not too sure but uh the switch as we reported last time is sold uh just under 18 million units However, the Wii is sold 101. 
So that's, you know, five times more. So maybe they're thinking like, oh, well, for marketing, yeah, we're not trying to top our own sales, but what we're trying to do is focus on the customer. Yeah. Uh, all right. You know, which, which, you know, <laughs> may encourage people. It's like, hey, well, you know, you, 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 you like the, the switch, but let's not forget about the Wii. Well, I mean, they, they, <laughs> they've, they've stopped that property. It's yeah. done now. So, but, um, but yeah, but I think, I think actually what it will do is it'll get people to say, hey, you know, Nintendo cares about their customer. Therefore, yeah. we should, we should try and invest in switches too. I think it'll be a, a sales by proxy kind of thing. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> but I mean, the other thing too is, you know, whether it's a marketing tactic or not, you know, I actually believe that there is a sincerity behind that. Yeah. No, that, that is true. And, um. And also their their first party support uh, for you know has been really really good so far for Switch so that that you know hopefully it'll just keep on driving the market up. Um, we had a quote from Kishima, which is the uh, yeah, <laughs> it's on the next one for me. There we go. Oh, okay. Sorry, Nintendo president, I should say. Tatsumi Kishima revealed that uh, they have a lot of experience with selling gaming systems and therefore they're going to actively incorporate everything they've learned, including their failures, into our planning, which is good. So, there we go. Oh. Something you might like. I, I keep on pressing the wrong key. There we go. There we go. <laughs> ah, news from Variety.com. Uh, Westworld renewed for season three already. Yeah, that looks really awesome. So even though um, season two is uh, debuted on April twenty second, um, they're already set up to bring us season three. Yeah, um, this is from uh, Variety dot com. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I, I, I've I've been actively like watching all this. It was it's a really great series. I know I know you haven't seen all of it quite yet. No, no, no. I I have some catching up to do. What did you think of the series so far? Um, it's absolutely amazing. Like it's very very stunning. I think I'm trying to remember where where I'm at. Um, I'm not going to get into details because I, I think I think if you haven't watched it, then anything yeah. I say will be a spoiler. And if you have watched it, then you know. Yeah, it's but it, not that interesting. It has it has big names like Anthony Hopkins. Yeah, it, and uh, uh, James Marsden. Yeah, Cyclops. It's so awesome to see. You know, it's really awesome to see James Marsden in something yeah. that's not like your, your rom com. Yeah. Or uh, or sci fi. He, here he's you know he's a real. You feel like he's a real you know person. Yeah. You get to see his act, a different uh, acting side for him. Well, you know, and I mean, the, one of the nice things about you know Westworld and and you know the way the the story is unfolded is the fact that, you know, since they're basically playing programmed parts, that's been moved around, so technically each character is multiple characters, and so, like, it just really kind of pushes the actor to, you know, to be able to play the same character, but multiple characters in that same one character. and You know, yeah. it's just, um, it, it, Candy Newton... Yeah, th- yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah, like, <laughs> um, we, we, there's some things I need to preface here. First, uh, it's it's a series that's set obviously in the kind of like a western setting. Um, there, there's androids involved, and there it's not safe for work by any means. There's nudity, like yeah. a fair, a fair. Yeah, bit if, of if you're not aware of the series, it's definitely you know yeah. something to watch after the kids go to bed. Yeah, that's true. But the uh, the directing, the the cinematography, everything it is really really yeah. awesome, and. Uh, um, I'm really excited to see what they have in store for season two and three. Um, it was directed by Jonathan Nolan. Uh, sorry, created by Jonathan Nolan, uh, which right. is obviously uh, Christopher Nolan's brother and uh, Lisa Joy. And they they are also the executive producers along with J.J. Abrams and yeah. more other other producers too. And it's based on the film of the same name written by Michael Crichton. There was a film? Westworld? Really? I, it's, I, I actually don't recall. <laughs> yeah, there was a film. <laughs> Just really? being honest. <laughs> you um, know, to any of you who may have been, you know, big fans of the film, I apologize. If, if, there, if it, the film was worth checking out, leave some comments below, okay, please. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so, next up. I'll put this on yours for now. Okay. Hey. All right. I'm going to throw that up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, from comicbookmovie.com. They tell go. us... Yes! Bill and Ted 3 is officially happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. All right, so... Um, yeah, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter will reunite for this. Um, now, in the article, uh, they do say that they're, you know, um, putting together, like, you know, all the original cast. But as we know, mm -hmm. George Carlin, unfortunately, rest, may he rest in peace, yeah. uh, is not joining. So I don't know if they are going to try and replace him in the character Rufus or if they're going to find some way to write him out of the script. There's no details as far as that was concerned. But well, he's a time traveler. He could be busy somewhere else. True, but true yeah, enough. I, I missed, yeah. Or, you know, he can come in as a younger version of himself. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they can do, uh, you know, I, I was actually thinking about that. Maybe a little tribute thing, like uh, yeah. how they did with Paul Walker or something. That that would be really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that, that looks so awesome. And uh, Keanu Reeves has been talking about this for quite some time, actually. He's been asked in multiple interviews, like, any chance of a Bill and Ted 3? And he's like, yeah, well, we're, you know, we yeah. want to make sure this yeah, goes Yeah, it, it, it was always in discussion. Yeah. You we know, I think sure it's, it's, it's probably been the popular theme answer. Yeah, they, they both said, they, they, him and, he's kept in touch, obviously, with Alex Winter for a long time. And they, yeah. they both did their game to do it, but they want to make sure it's, you know, done well. So. Now, I don't recall seeing, like, a whole lot from Alex Winter over the years. Yeah, not so much, not so much. Yeah. However, um, other people, like... Um, Chris Matheson, the, that was one of the original creators, and he worked on Imagine That, the movie. And um, Ed Solomon, who's you know very famous for Men in Black and Now You See Me. So they, they wrote the script for this. And uh, Dean Parasot is the director, and he did Galaxy Quest, Red 2, and Fun with Dick and Jane. I love Galaxy Quest. So good. So good. If you can d direct Alan Rickman, you know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, so Reeves and Winter both said they couldn't be more excited, and uh, with Chris and Ed, with their script, and with Dean at the helm, they have a uh, dream team. So that's really awesome. Next up, UPS is, to, this is from uh, techspot.com by the way, UPS is to trial their uh, fleet of adorable EVs in London and Paris this year. They're so cute. They, they really are. Um, you know, and I mean, the thing is, is, you know, you've seen um, various movies like, you know, like with Logan and, you know, the self-driving vehicles. Now, these ones aren't actually self-driving, uh, but they do come with like a driver assist yep. uh, in order to um, help uh, protect like cyclists and pedestrians and also to reduce the amount of driver fatigue yep. um, that their couriers will, will have. Now, this is um, being released in the EU yeah, that's right. Uh, their UPS is working with a UK-based technology company called Arrival, yeah. and they're producing 35 of these for now. And um, they actually have some plans to release some of these in uh, stateside in the United States as well. Yeah. These EVs have a great range too. They have a battery range of over 150 miles or 240 uh, clicks. Yeah. So that's that's a decent range from the batteries. <clears throat> Next up. All right, here we go. Heading into space. Uber doubles down on their partnership with La uh, NASA for flying taxi service. This seems a little far-fetched. Well, <laughs> you know what? I, I mean, I picked the article, but I'm saying it seems a little far-fetched. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not gonna, gonna lie, like, my whole life, you know, like, I, I, I love the idea of flying, um... Back to the future. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that, that whole thing with, like, you know, hover cars and that, that whole thing has just you know always sparked my imagination but in very recent times i think elon musk said it best when he's like flying cars are not the way of the future and when somebody asked him to elaborate he said think of your neighbor do you think your neighbor neighbor is a good driver now imagine him flying a vehicle mm. is that a good thought Mm. You, you know, you'd have to have like automated systems, and you'd have to have like you know infrastructure. Yeah, like set you, up you're basically that, yeah. you know if you take ninety eight percent of the control away from the the driver, then maybe that's a feasible system. Yeah. And I mean, you know, with the idea of like you know Google Maps and GPS and all of that sort of stuff, uh, and the technology that they you know have currently developed with self driving vehicles, that that is that is quite the possibility. I I wouldn't be surprised if their roadmap 
for that. You know, after they ne- get down the self-driving vehicles completely and there's, you know, yeah. very, very or little or zero accidents, then applying that technology to airspace. Yeah, and then, you know, you just basically have to take the GPS mapping model and add altitude to it. Yeah, and collision detection and everything else. Well, speaking I mean, the <laughs> collision detection is already there. Speaking of which, yes, yeah, speaking of which, uh, back to your article here. Um, this is from Engadget.com. And basically, Uber announced last fall that its flying taxi project called Elevate is getting software from NASA. And both Uber and NASA signed a Space Act agreement for an air traffic control system. It, you know, you kind of think of Uber as like, all right, maybe it's not the... I, I've had some personally some sleazy impressions of Uber and the, its business practices. That being said, it's an amazing service. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, you know, and I've... Um talk to a you know a few uh friends who just have nothing but good things to say about like uber especially when they're traveling you know yeah. because i mean you go to um you know you you go to a foreign country for example mm-hmm. uh, wherever that ha- may happen to be from where you, you are um, you don't know how much a cab is going to cost you from the airport to your hotel yeah. But then, with, with uh, Uber, Uber's actually partnered with, with Google so that on Google Maps, when you're looking for like transit information, one of the options that it'll tell you is, you know, or you could take an Uber. This is how long it'll take. This is how much it'll cost. Not only that, but because it's all digital, yeah. if you have a bad experience or the cabbie tries to rip you off or something, yeah. obviously you can rate the cabbie on the spot. And, yeah. you know, there, there, there will be some repercussions. You know, so that, that, that basically that, that forces, you know, Uber drivers to be a little bit better in like, you know, um, making sure that they take you the most direct way. Manners. Not, yeah, manners, <laughs> not, not charging you too much money, yeah. maintaining the quality of their vehicle. Oh God, yeah. Oh. Like I've, I've, <laughs> I've been in some pretty disgusting cabs over the years. Most of them, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to get down on taxi drivers because I know some cool taxi drivers and most of the time, you know, the ride in the cab is a pretty pleasant experience, but yeah. I've also had some nightmare experiences. Yeah, it's, it's funny because you have like a, a hundred great experiences, and I say a hundred because I've actually been in a hundred taxis in Taiwan, you know, because yeah. they're, they're so cheap here. Um, but back home, I had maybe like two <laughs> yeah. in 25 years of living there. But uh, you get some really nice plush vehicles, but you have one ride and I still remember there's yeah. one in, in Kaohsiung, which is uh, down the south of Taiwan, and it was this old beat up Corolla or Tur- Tercel or something like that, yeah. four-door, and it, the thing was falling apart. It was a rust bucket. It was like, oh, my God. I, I was afraid we were going to break the car. <laughs> but getting back to the article. Okay, so uh, they both signed a Space Act agreement for their uh, air traffic control system. Now they've just signed a second agreement, and this is the news uh, here, uh, that – NASA is taking Uber's plans to simulate. Uh, basically, they're, they're taking, okay, these are Uber's plans. And NASA said, okay, let's take those. And then they're going to run simulations as to how they're going to work out in Texas airspace. Because um, they're going to issues like uh, simulate issues like air traffic and also p- potential collisions over the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is the first of two mm-hmm. uh, planned locations, the other being Los Angeles. For the series. It's going to turn into Blade Runner. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uber is also partnering with the U.S. Army to spend a combined $1 million on mar- making and testing a flying taxi concept. Actually, $1 million for a flying taxi is probably not that unreasonable. No. Especially if you want to, you know, it done properly. Probably. Well, and, and, and again, being a, you know, flying vehicle in the... Yeah, yeah that, that's true. That's true. <sighs> All right. You know, you definitely want that done properly. That is true. Um, okay, and now, as I said, you know, we, we like to support uh, things that make our lives easier. And Play Asia is one of those things because you can order games from anywhere in the world, uh, pretty much, and they will ship it to you. So in Asia, you can't buy, you know, English RPGs. They're almost impossible unless they've been released as an international version. But. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I just I did the Doctor Evil thing, didn't I? <laughs> international, international, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, they, they they support uh, players, and that that's great. So that's why I'm supporting that, that them, and also you know we do have affiliate links. That's true, but uh, some of their content they have is great. So let's start off with this one: uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is on 
sale right now. It's actually 10 bucks off and you get 30 playable characters. Uh, it's on sale for $39.99. And yeah, it looks great. I've actually checked out some of the characters. They got Doctor Strange and Iron Man and some other awesome mm -hmm. characters there too. Uh, I think one before, one after that. Is it? Yeah, one before, one after. No. One after. Ah, I forgot to retile them. That's why. Oh, okay. All right. <clears throat> Next one up. No, uh, yeah. I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess my, so because I, I lost order. Yeah, we, yeah, it's, it's all good. Dragon Ball Gals, Dragon Ball prepainted PVC figure. It's the Bulma Army version type two, and. Uh, the pre-order deadline is only four days away, so if you like Dragon Ball, you like Bulma, you like this kind of figurine, then uh, you're definitely... girls and guns. <laughs> Girl, girls and guns always works. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I got mine... I got uh, uh, it up on the screen right here, so it's a really nicely detailed figure. I really like this. It's got some other screenshots. You can definitely check the links down below to um, see the different poses and stuff for all these figurines, too. And... Uh, 86 bucks, 85.99 is not bad for a figurine of this quality. I mean, figurines are expensive, so but uh, 86 bucks for that kind of quality and plus it's Dragon Ball. So, yeah. Okay, so wait. Okay, that's so I'm back on track here. Yeah, it's all good. All right. You got the right one. Dragon Crown, Dragon's Crown Pro, the Royal Package. And uh, this is the Japanese version, by the way. So if you want this package, maybe you're a collector. So just be, be advised, okay? Obviously this will be region locked to Asia. So if you have an Asian machine, you're playing with an Asian account, no problems. But otherwise you should be a little careful. However, um, it does have some cool stuff in it. What's it got? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, uh. We got the Dragon Crown Pro Orchestra album, three CDs, a uh, special booklet. What else we got? Um, Looks like it's got to like come uh, DS, DLC set of digital art collection, and that. yeah, it looks like it's got some kind of mat or something. And the, this box is really wide too. It's like a wide, wide kind of box, but uh, it looks good. Well, it's on sale right now. Uh, you get to save seventeen bucks at uh, 108 or 109 dollars us so if you're if you're a collector and you want this kind of stuff then maybe check it out looks pretty cool next one we got up is the persona 5 1 7 scale pre-painted figure and takamaki kaito and this is a reprint edition um this is it not yet released of course because you have to pre-order it expected to ship 2019 but the pre-order deadline is may 29th so that is just at the end of this month okay this one goes for 155 Whew. yeah although you know really those those figures never are cheap yeah yeah but the detail on this is quite nice i okay, think so. there is another shot okay. sorry i'm on yours there we go oh there we go okay right, right. yeah right out there so yeah the detail on this is quite nice I, I was just trying to do the most presentable one don't want to don't want any censorship so <laughs> but you go to the site you can check out the other shots there's this one and uh what else we got so that's 155 next one if you are into girls with guns then this game is probably for you this is bullet girls fantasia and it is a pre-order also for 56 dollars it's gonna ship hopefully soon quarter second quarter of 2018 so that's that's coming up quite soon so 56 bucks for that. Uh, you can go check out some YouTube videos or click through to the site and you'll see some other screenshots, but it looks interesting. And uh, you you get to be very, uh, uh, there's girls fighting girls and you get to shoot lots of stuff and, and be very uh, kind of intimate with some of the girls. So if that's your thing, then there we go. <laughs> okay. Uh... Oh, this next one's a beast. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Literally. If you like Okami, and I, I love Okami, I, I'm seriously considering, you know, thinking about buying this. <laughs> that's that, that's a hefty price, but yeah. let, let me tell you something. This this statue is so cool. It's it's really, really nicely done, especially with that backdrop. Oh, yeah. it's just beautiful. Obviously, that I don't think the backdrop drop comes with it. However... No, I don't even think that's an actual physical backdrop. That's all... 
Oh, CG. Yeah, probably. Probably CG. However, check out this stuff. Oh, that's the actual model right there. That's that's beautiful. And on yours. There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, one of them skipped. And yeah, the reason why it costs so much, because it costs, that, that's a fair chunk of change. The reason why it costs so much is that it is large. It, it's a Oh, big... I thought you were going to say it was carved out of the horn of a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Which totally makes be. sense to it me. It could be. <laughs> it grants wishes. <laughs> it does. <laughs> this one is, uh, yeah, it's, uh, what is it? It's 14 inches high by 18 inches wide and 17 inches deep or 36 centimeters by 46 centimeters by 43 centimeters so it's it's a big it's a big you know statue yeah. that's really awesome that, that's like a mantle piece you know thing right there but uh yeah for 485 bucks for that so maybe worth it if you're a huge okami fan um by the way this are, this is also a pre-order and there's a deadline. That's how the a lot of the models work because they'll they'll get in all the orders and then they'll actually produce to order how many models there are. And the deadline will be May twenty seventh. That's the end of this month also. So yeah. if you're thinking about it, save up that money. There we go. Last one we got. Uh let's see. That's still on me, right? Yeah, it's still on you. Uh go back no. one. Go back one. There we go. Oh there we go. Slightly in the wrong order. <clears throat> Ta-da! Ys Origin. I hope I'm saying that right. I think it's Ys. That, that's what I have always thought. Yeah, Ys. Or Ys. I don't know. Ys. I think it's Ys. <laughs> oh, it is Ys because in Japan it's an I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Ys. That's right. Summer Sale 2018. By the way, Play Asia is having a big summer sale. You get to save five bucks on this amazing title and brings it down to twenty four ninety nine. So there you go. Um, yeah, I've, I've played a, a couple of these Ys games and I really, really like them. They're on par, on par. I'm gonna get shot down in the comments for this, but on par with some Final Fantasy titles. I just, I really like their style and better than Breath of Fire. Anyways. Yeah, I confess, <laughs> I have not played any of them. That's okay. That's okay. okay. <laughs> Too much time on your hands and don't, uh, don't judge me. And a Super Nintendo. What are you gonna do, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, that's it for the news for today. Oh, wow. We got some comments in here. I'm sorry, I was dealing with technical issues, so I didn't see a, a couple of comments in chat. James Thomas, hey, thank, hey, thanks, brother. Thanks for dropping by. We appreciate it. That's uh, that's one of our uh, Taiwan brethren there. He does podcasts and stuff. So big shout oh, out nice. to you, James. Thank you very right. much. Thanks for dropping thank by. Vanishing Sun 2K. That's my bro, Jeremy. Hey, there we go. Movie from 1973. Wouldn't have got any traction with Yule Brunner. Oh, he's talking about uh, Blade Runner, wasn't he? Blade Runner, right? I will have to. I will have to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! We're no, no, uh, no Westworld. West World. West World. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, is it, if it's got Yul Brenner, I gotta check that out. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Thanks for that, bro. I yeah. appreciate that. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. So if you uh, that pretty much wraps up this episode. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any comments, any suggestions for future videos. Um, then please do leave them in the comments below. We appreciate it. Please do subscribe. Uh, again, we can also be reached on Twitter. Yep, please do send us Twitter. And we're also on Instagram as well. You can just check out our TechSpin uh, Twitter and or Facebook pages to get hooked up either one. Right. So there you go. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, so please uh, feel free to like and subscribe. And and we'll see you we, next we, week. We try to do this every week. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> this time ran a little bit long uh, uh, before we started up. And uh, sorry, I'm not going to preset the uh, I preset the next show because yeah. I thought, oh yeah, no problem, right? So of course, of course, there's always problems. <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're working out the bugs and yeah, we're we're going to try and do this about the same time. And we both had a really busy week. <laughs> yeah, really busy. Really, really so. Thank you for your patience. Thanks for tuning in. And see you guys on the next show. Yeah, yeah. Talk to you soon. Right, bye. Thanks.